We all want the best for our pets, but we know it's impossible to completely protect them from illness or accident. Speak for yourself. With Australians spending $2.6 billion a year on vet bills, it's unsurprising that many of us take out pet insurance. With so many insurers to choose from, it seems complicated. But there are actually only two underwriters in the market. Allianz, who operate Pet Plan and Pet Cover, and Hollard, who underwrite the rest. I'll take them all! Like all forms of insurance, pet insurance offers peace of mind. But there are plenty of exceptions. For starters, these are the most common reasons for pet insurance claims. And in Hollard policies, whether it be swallowing foreign objects or knee problems, they only get qualified cover. Hmm, it's definitely a foreign object. Plus, waiting period doesn't mean you have to wait to make a claim. It means if your pet develops a condition during the waiting period, that problem will be considered pre-existing and will be excluded from cover forever. Hollard's accident-only insurance also doesn't cover dislocated kneecaps. But thankfully, according to Sydney University data, that's only likely to happen in the following breeds. <laughs> Allianz's pet cover doesn't cover these either. It also doesn't cover anything to do with hip dysplasia. But that's OK, because that's only common in these breeds. <laughs> or this common eye problem in Tropian, which has a list of commonly affected animals that goes on as far as the eye can see. Unless they got entropian. All policies have a special clause that say that anything that your pet has a lot of are treated as one. So if your pet has a pre-existing skin condition, for example, nothing to do with their skin will ever be covered, no matter what it is or where it occurs. And if they have a problem with one eye, ear, kidney or leg, nothing to do with the other one will ever be covered which means you need to be extra careful from now on. Most plans don't cover dental either, and that doesn't just exclude teeth, but any oral disease. Even if dental is included, you're still only covered if you take your pet for a dental checkup that you pay for every year. Have you stopped flossing? So while your dog's second leg won't be covered, Pet Plan will help out if your pet goes missing by paying for advertising in your local newspaper. They'll even pay for a reward. But extras like that can cost you in other ways. So perhaps the biggest question you should be asking is how big your co-payment is. This is the percentage you pay of any claim. It can be expensive and you can't get it back by continuously kidnapping your dog and getting pet plan to pay the reward. It's usually about 20% of the vet fees. And for most policies, it stays this way. But some plans increase the co-payment when your pet becomes a pensioner, when they're more likely to need to claim. One adult and one pensioner, please. Show some respect. Captain Mittenface built this country. Of course, none of this is to say you shouldn't get pet insurance. Vets are getting pretty sophisticated these days. I can put him down. I can give him Botox. Which means their bills can be huge. If only Mittens and I could express our shock right now. Which is why, despite these exclusions, pet insurance still might be the right option. Because if you can't afford a massive vet bill, you may need to consider another option. I can put her down. No, no we, we can't live without her. You didn't say that about me. 